Right, what is in your bag? And I'll bet I can guess it's similar to mine. You'll have a putter, three wedges, irons up to four iron, maybe even three iron, hybrid, five wood, three wood, driver. Pretty much the norm, but is that the best bag to have as an average golfer? I think it's time to have a look at an alternative what's in the bag. Yeah, so I think uh, tradition is a word that's uh, often used in a game of golf. And I think traditionally we will pick a, uh, a certain set of golf clubs in, in terms of a setup, very much like what we see on the TV. We follow the people that, uh, that we watch and try to emulate. But a big question is, is that best for an average golfer with a skill set that will be totally different to those who have got that historical setup in terms of the golf clubs they carry in their bag? So in recent weeks, I've done a number of videos. I've looked at maybe alternative products in terms of, like I said, I keep mentioning what we expect to be for the norm. And I'm going to start off at the top end of the bag because what happens is with this, it's all about similar... Uh, there's a similarity that runs through all of this. It's all about ease of use. It's all about greater control. And it starts off with top end of the bag. And I actually gained this product. It's the Mini Driver. Now, again, the idea behind the Mini Driver for me is a simple one large uh, profile in terms of some bulk and mass uh, behind the ball at address but a shorter shaft than what i would expect to hit with driver and that combination of the two sat behind the ball at address on a tee has given me a great deal of confidence probably lost 10 yards in terms of distance from my best driving capabilities but in terms of accuracy I feel like it's made a considerable difference to me off the tee. And that's been an issue for me for, for, for quite some years, to be honest with you. Next two clubs in the bag, and I'm going to get these out together, is I've got an 18 degree three hybrid. And then I've got a five wood at also 18 degrees. The main thing that I want to talk about with these, and again, recent videos I've done, I've looked at the performance of exactly the setup that I've got here. So please, if you've not watched them videos, don't go and do it. But the idea is simple. They've got exactly the same length of shaft in both clubs. They both offer up different yardages in terms of gapping. But what they do in terms of being the same is that same length of shaft means that each time I address the ball, whether I'm grabbing out my five wood or my three hybrid, I've got some familiarity. And the familiarity is something that I'm very, very comfortable with in terms of that length of shaft. And once again, what I found in the test that I did is that I didn't lose greatly in terms of distance. Once again, yes, there's a yardage drop off in using the shorter shaft in the five wood I'm referring to now. So it's hybrid length shaft that I've got in the five wood. But what I lost for in terms of yardage, I gained again in terms of control. But like I said, it's almost got the one length concept, if you like, that uh, Cobra offer. And whilst I don't buy into that, right across the board it's something i personally can't get really comfortable with in terms of having two of the longer end in particular clubs in the bag with the same length shaft that familiarity behind the ball at address is something that i really like the idea and i think that would suit a lot more golfers then it's into the top end of the bag in terms of what traditionally would be longer irons now how many of you struggle with a four iron with a five iron perhaps even a six iron and I think there's a lot of golfers, I think, would fit into that category. And again, videos that I did in recent weeks, and once again, I'll grab two, but arguably there'd be three, perhaps even four of these in the bag, depending on where you want to go. Once again, for purposes of the bag that I've put together, JPX Fly High is the hybrid types that I've got in my bag next. And they could be, like I said, from a number of different manufacturers that offer this kind of product. But what these do really well, once again, is that shorter shaft, so again, Lots of control, not too dissimilar to almost the length what you'll see in a sort of uh, four, uh, a five iron. But again, that bulk and mass sat behind the ball just gives that extra bit of confidence. The placement of CG helps getting that ball airborne and launched. And again, a real difficult end of the bag, the longer irons, 
is without doubt an area where most majority of average golfers would fall down then having the help of that extra mass that extra confidence that lower cg placement that you're able to do in the bigger club heads again massive massive bonus for me and then you throw in the kind of the versatility and i'm going to grab the seven back out again because the idea we've looked at um, another club recently a chipper has been a perhaps a big help for for golfers who struggle with chipping but once again this kind of loft on this seven hybrid would almost be can act as a chipper and, and, and plenty of versatility in and around the green so doubles up in a number of different ways as well particularly that sort of seven hybrid and again i don't care how far people want to go i mean I'm, in recent comments i'm seeing people who are playing nine hybrids even 11 hybrids and for me you take all the help you can get anything that makes this game easier that's the route that you go down so for me with the bag setup that i've put i would go down to a seven in terms of the uh, the hybrid type so for me, I would only be carrying traditional, what I would call traditionally three irons, and that's an eight, nine, and a wedge. Now, it's important, obviously, that you get your gapping right throughout the bag. So wherever we're going through this, and this is the, the setup that I've put together, it's important to get the gaps right. But the way I looked at it, from what I, numbers I got from the seven hybrid, the eight iron sat right next in in terms of the next gap that I want to fill. And then I went through to wedge. And once again, that can be any club, obviously any set of irons that fits that gap. And then it's into the wedges. The big deal for me with the wedges has always been, and what I've looked at in the last uh, year or so, is that most average golfers will play a game improvement style club. Or let's put it another way, most average golfers won't play a blade style club. And if you have the blade style club ability, then this again wouldn't apply, this bag wouldn't apply to you. But if you're using game improvement irons, the question I would ask you is this. When you go from your game improvement wedge, where do you go next? How many of you have got a set of Vokey wedges? How many of you got some Milgrime wedges uh, from TaylorMade? How many of you got some Callaway Jaws wedges? Those wedges are effectively blade style wedges. That's an MG2 from TaylorMade. Very, very thin top line, very, very narrow sole. Not a lot of mass in the club whatsoever. My argument is you've just gone from a, a, a game improvement iron and then you've decided to switch yourself into a wedge, which is typically a blade. And that's a big change for me. And in the last year or so, when I first tried these clubs out, this has still got a grip, a, a bit of plastic on it. This is uh, straight out the shop because I've not got these to hand. This is the CBX2 wedge from Cleveland. I tested the CBX1, like I said, maybe six, seven, eight months ago. And it was a real eye opener for me. Off the shelf, it looked a little bit more cumbersome than the likes of the MG2 and a traditional wedge. It's got a bit more mass in terms of the top line. It is effectively what you would expect to call a game improvement wedge, I think. But that thick sole, the thick top line, the bit of mass behind the ball, it is by far the most user-friendly wedge that I have tried and would definitely suit more average golfers than it wouldn't. I've just been speaking, actually, just someone just come in now. A pro works here who's just come in now and made a reference to the CBX2 wedges. He's just took them out in the last week or so, currently gaming a Vokey, and he said he's going to put them in the bag. He was shocked how good and how easy they were to use. And it's interesting, and it's a real change in mentality, and I think if more and more average golfers in particular open their eyes a bit to these kind of options, I think there could be some help out there that we're not currently getting. So again, how many of those you carry? I'll be up to you. I've got a 50 and a 54 in there right now. But you then come to the final club, and it's the putter. And the putter for me is something that it's a very, very personal thing. There is no such thing, perhaps, as an average golfer's putter. But what they'll generally be, I think most average golfers are better suited to a mallet due to the kind of stroke that they put on it. And I think that if you can find a club with high MOI, which is basically high uh, level of forgiveness, and a face balance putter, then you've got more chance of getting that club head, that putter head square at impact and giving yourself a bit of a chance. But I think that's a bit of a, that's a broad one, because like I said, putting is a very, very personal thing. But in general, I think most average golfers will be better suited to face balance putters. And that's it. Or is it? One surprise left in the bag, and it's the most recent video that I've done. And it'd be highly frowned upon by many, but I was also surprised by how many are actually, actually using and gaming one of these things, and it's the chipper. 
And a chipper was a video, like I said, I did in recent weeks. I took it out on the course. I literally took the wrapper out off on the course. And I was surprised again at just, I suppose I was surprised at how well it performed. It's a little bit one-dimensional. I think it's a club that perhaps you would look at putting, it's a bonus club in terms of how many clubs you've got in the bag. And there are a couple of options I'm going to talk about now in terms of bonus clubs. But for a lot of golfers, I firmly believe a lot of average golfers, a lot of high handicap golfers who perhaps struggle with their chipping, and if you've got room in the bag, this was 25 quid. And I think for me, it's a real weapon that you could practice with. It's almost like a training aid. If, you, if, if anyone who has an issue with using a chipper, I almost think it's a training aid to then take the kind of skill that you learn with the chipper to take it into a 7, 8 and 9 iron. If you, if you prefer to use those clubs out on the course, then it almost can be used as a training aid for that. But I found it to be a, a very useful tool. It was very much suited to the Lynx course that I play at. And uh, I'm going to stick it in a bag for a little while longer and play around with it, to be honest with you. So then the additions in a bag, you've got things like, obviously, that whole hybrid situation can, uh, can move around at whatever way you wish to make it fit for you. And like I said, you can go up to 11 in terms of the hybrid. You can maybe uh, drop some of the five woods out, whatever you're comfortable with. I think the shaft length is really important for control. You've then got things like the tailor-made uh, the high toe big foot wedge, which again, that's a 60 deal, 58 or 60 the offer in that. Again, it's a kind of like, it's a bonus club in that you're not going to get a lot of use out of it around the course, but there will be situations where it will come in handy. The principle of that big foot wedge is again, the width of sole, the principle being the same as what you're doing with the Cleveland wedges. So again, for me, massive assistance in terms of helping the average golfer perform better out there on the golf course. So, the question is, what's in your bag? How does it compare to this? And what do you think of this alternative setup? Would it help you in performing better and ultimately scoring lower? But it's a far cry from what we see as the norm. But I reckon that that would help rather than hinder most average golfers out there.